Hello guys, burning here. It took them around 15 years, but they finally managed to bring rework to the West. Therefore, as promised, I am making a guide for an updated version of Deadeye. I will use TTS instead of my real voice because this way I can make guide faster. That being said, let's start the guide, firstly, let's look at what changed in Deadeye after the rework. I will only cover relevant to PvP changes, not going to go through every small thing to save time. For PvP, class become way more mashy and brain dead, but stronger. HOJ and triple explosion were removed. Plasma bullet is somehow still here, like how in the fuck. Three new skills were added. Judgment day, shotgun skill with decent range that applies hard stagger and has hard stagger immunity. Can be used for trades or just soaking stagger. Desperado, pistol skill that is used for mobility in 3v3 and combos in 1v1. Also, can be used to catch opponents off guard with long range area of effect. One shot one kill, sniper rifle ability that does relatively small amount of damage, but is very fast, so we can fit it in 1v1 combos and when crits it does fantastic damage, tripods of these abilities will be discussed later, when we will be talking about builds. Additionally, they reworked fire damage tripods, so they now increase outgoing damage, nerf death fire to shit, now you have to choose between, knockdown immunity and dash, also bombs no longer knock people down, heavily buffed aim shot. So stun is now level 4 tripod, range of shots increased, camera zooms out when you shoot and on top of that you can now finish the ability quicker, and stun or knock down opponent with your second or third shot, as a countermeasure cooldown is now 12 seconds longer and rotation speed was decreased. They also buffed double shot tripod of last request, making it do the same amount of damage as volley. So if you see anyone using volley in your games, be sure to point your finger and laugh at them. Now with the boring part out of the way, let's jump to builds, for 1v1 points from HOJ went right to Desperado. And points from Catastrophe went to one shot, one kill. Well with HOJ it's easy to understand why it happened, but why we take points away from Catastrophe? Well multiple reasons, firstly this way we can maximize damage per catch of our combos which is important in 1v1, with fire damage tripod on last request we cannot reliably freeze opponent, because last request does too much damage, we of course can use cooldown reduction as our level 4 tripod, but what will it leave us with? Smaller damage and lack of combo variety from different situations. And now is a good time to talk about a certain combo you might have seen from Korean server. Well yes, this combo doesn't work, the dumbass in question did it on a bot, what him and other amateur players may not see is that the enemy will receive immunity after first catastrophe explosion, making him not be knocked up again by second explosion, what will allow him to space bar away before last request. Which leads to this. You got a tight little man pussy on you, don't you? Oh, it stinks. Nice and good. So yeah, you won't be able to fit last request in it, the fact that this becomes so viral and different people send it to me 50 fucking times is beyond me. Other reasons for taking points specifically from Catastrophe is allowing us to freely use it as T2 immunity button and sit in soaking opponent's knockdown without wasting damage, additionally we can use it as a knockdown button in our combo instead of shotgun dominator. Let's also discuss additional tripod options, for aim shot level 4 stun is non-negotiable, it gives us way more value than other options and allows us to combo into the opponent we hit with our last shot. For level 7 death fire it doesn't really matter what to pick, because you will not sit in death fire as you did before, you can generally pick either movement speed reduction or 10k explosion aoe damage. Again, you will almost never finish death fire cast, so who cares. For desperado, you have two options for level 4 tripod, either aoe range or faster bullet shots. With range, it's easier to catch opponents off guard, and you can use Desperado after Shotgun Dominator. Faster bullet shots will in theory help you catch opponents from freeze easier, but people can mash out regardless, so it doesn't make much difference. For shotguns, we have 4 points to spare and our options here are, 2 tripods for Judgment Day or 1 for Shotgun Rapid Fire. Others are not good enough, with long range Judgment Day tripod, it makes hitbox thinner and longer, but you still cannot catch people from blind zone and because it's thin and opponents are constantly moving there is no point in using it as a trade tool, only against opponents that auto-attack constantly being afraid of death fire. And well, you have sniper auto-attack for that, so it just makes the skill safer version of sniper auto, you can't space bar out of sniper auto-attack before shot happens by the way. So I suggest you either to choose wider attack range to catch mobile classes that lack immunity on their mobility buttons. For example dexterous shot of deadeye or roll of scouter, well you can also catch people who for some reason walk near you a lot. Or pick attack bandolier, so shots start faster and you move a little bit quicker. For shotgun rapid fire we really only have combo rapid fire tripod, extended shot is useless. Opponent is able to space bar out of the last shot, and you can't re-knock opponents that are laying down. 
so it is only can be in theory used against giga brain opponents that for some reason decide to dash in you after you shot your first two shots. Combo rapid fire is okay, but not necessary to use, we can soak staggers in new buttons, and we generally have no need in it, in theory we can say that if we catch opponent with first shot with this tripod we can cancel SGR and start the combo, and we can't do it without tripod, but let's be real this situation will never happen. Now we can move on to 3v3 builds, I mean, points from aim shot go into desperado and that's about it. From there, you can have two options on how to make a build. It's either sniper focused, when you dive into opponent's fart safe short combo and jump away, to continue knock people down with level 7 spiral flame and catch opponents or save teammates with aim shot. Or the standard vanilla option with level 10 last request. Nothing much to say really, pick one you prefer and go for it. Both are viable and with both being good enough you can hit any rank. With sniper heavy, you kinda lose the ability to use perfect shot as freely as you used it before, but it is a great tool to stay a little bit more safe during combos. You don't have para immunity on last request and there is an army of long range women and children ready to interrupt the shit you are doing. You can also help your teammates to finish people off from across the map. It also crits for like 71k at the end of a match, but it's not as important. For level 7 spiral flame, well it works nicely for 3v3, because a lot of classes are walking outside of combat without pressing anything saving button for the time they fight an enemy, so it's easy to hit them and because of the goofy camera in 3v3 that allows you to position yourself in enemy blind zone easier. But again, it's harder to use perfect shot with this build, so if you are trigger happy and can't stop yourself from spamming and missing it. Just go with standard build, now let's move on to combos. For 3v3, you will mostly do very fast and short combos that don't require any videos to understand, so I just show what you can do and when you can do it. For 1v1 situation is a bit different. With that, I believe we could end the guide. I could talk some more about how picking kill confirmation instead of defenseless target on catastrophe is fucking stupid, bad and cringe. Or how spamming sniper auto attacks against opponents with developed frontal lobe is a suicide. Or spend 40 more hours of creating slides and editing to explain every matchup in the game, but let's be real game on the west is dead, and making a guide for giga dead pvp in dead game on a class most people don't care to play with no benefit whatsoever is a waste of time but well, felt like doing it so here you go. Bye bye.